Welcome. My name is Irene Stewart. I'm a retention coordinator here at St. Clair College, and I'm pleased to present to you an online seminar, Mastering Exam Prep, Strategies for Success. My plan today is to cover a number of topics briefly. I'd like to begin with creating a study schedule for exam success and then move on to a particular study method that you can use uh, called the SQ3R method for exam prep. I'd also like to share some tips for you on how you can stay on track, as well as some strategies for handling internal distractions. This is good for studying. It's also going to be good for uh, when you're writing your exams. And I want to end on a few tips about taking care of yourself, because I think that is important during exam time that you stay healthy. If you are healthy and if you care for yourself through the exam period, you are in a better mental and physical state to be able to demonstrate the knowledge that you have built up over the semester on the exams that you will be writing. So for me, the first step to preparing for exams is to create a study schedule. A study schedule is going to help you manage your time effectively and focus on your priorities. This can help reduce the stress that you feel as exam time is approaching and hopefully will help you to avoid last minute cramming, which is mentally and physically exhausting and definitely not the best way to study. So my suggestion to you is you take a look right now at how much time we have. How many days do we have until your exams begin? Most exams are going to start on December 9 this semester. And so you've got about a week and a half. That's not that many days, but it does include two weekends. What I encourage you to do is to take a look at what else do you have going on? What classes do you have are most important, as well as work and personal commitments? And look for one, two, and three three hour blocks, study blocks that you can schedule in the next 10 days, 12 days that we have left uh, and uh, find times and you may even have to uh, perhaps give up some personal uh, discretionary activities that you were going to do to focus on study, uh, but find those times Block off certainly times for meals and sleeps and some breaks uh, so that you don't completely overload yourself. But look now at what time do you have available for study in the coming days. I also encourage you to take a look at your exam schedule because although exams start at December 9th, you're not going to have all of your exams on Monday of exam week. Uh, some exams might take place later in the week. So it's important to know which exams uh, are going to be written on which dates, all right, which are scheduled first, and then also look at how much material are they going to cover. Uh, you may want to start studying um, for the exams that are coming earlier in the week, as well as those that are more difficult. And you can make a judgment about whether or not you can postpone studying on some of the easy easier or later exams. But now is a good time to be examining your exam schedule. I encourage you to take then a look at the study blocks that you have determined and set some goals for each one of those blocks. Determine what subjects you're going to study, what courses are you going to study in each of those blocks, and what is the goal going to be. So for example, you might be saying, I want to study chapter one, two, and three from um, uh, my first year accounting course on my study period that I'm having tomorrow afternoon, and I'm going to do that again on Saturday morning, all right? And ensure that your goals are realistic and specific. Uh, have an idea of how much material you'd like to cover. 
It's also really helpful wherever you can to break down any material that you have to study into smaller manageable uh, sections. So my example here on the slide is that rather than studying, putting down study chemistry, break it down and say, here are the topics within chemistry that I'm going to study in this particular study block. It is important, I think, to keep track by either using a planner, this can be digital or can be on uh, paper to schedule those blocks and the specific uh, topics. If you have a longer study session, you may actually want to study more than one subject. This helps you avoid fatigue. So for example, if you have a two hour block, uh, you might choose two different courses that you're gonna spend some time studying on. Keep in mind the idea that uh, studying often for shorter periods of time is more effective than studying for one long block of time for one subject. So if I can use the example of, uh, let's say you have a four hour block, I wouldn't suggest studying for four hours at a time, but you have a four hour block the night before the exam is less effective than studying one hour a night for the four nights leading up to the exam. That is a much more effective way to study. You've created a schedule, you've taken a look at what times are available over the next few days, the next week and a half before exam uh, starts, as well as times that you have available to study during the exam week. You have determined which exams you want to study for during which periods, and you've broken down the topics that you want to study in those blocks. Great. Uh, and now you've come to your first block and you're, you're getting ready to study. What are you going to do during that study time? I think for many students, what they do is they take out their books, they take out their notes, and they start reading, okay? And I'm not saying that's not a great way to study. It's just not necessarily the most effective way. So I want to give you another strategy that you can use. It's called the SQ3R. Now, this is a structured approach that helps you engage with the material. It helps you also practice retrieving information. Uh, and reviewing information, starting with what you know, which is a really effective strategy. Now, SQ3R stands for scan, question, read, recite, and review. So let's take a look at that. Now, certainly, I recommend that you attend any review classes that your instructors and your professors may have for you, all right? Uh, pay attention uh, to clues that they might give you. Some, some professors make it really simple and they'll just straight out say, this is going to be on the exam. Love those tips. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of taking a look at what has been emphasized uh, when your instructor says this is important. Uh, those are the kinds of things you're looking for. You're also looking in for information from your professor about the, the, the um, scope of the final exam. Is it truly a final exam and going to cover all the material that you've taken throughout the whole semester? Or is it more a final test where it is just on the last two, three, four chapters or the last unit you have covered? Okay, uh, that makes a difference. So know what is the scope of the exam? What is the material that it covers? And then what I want you to do is to scan your notes in your textbook and start creating a list, a list of the major exam topics. You can highlight headings, subheadings, keywords, uh, all of that is great, but have a general overview of this is the material that I need to cover. And you're going to do that quite quickly. So a quick scan, a brush over all of the material, not a deep studying to begin with. After you have done that, I want you to create some uh, as essay style questions, okay? So not multiple choice questions, but uh, questions about the, the topic. You're doing the end of marketing and you have um, 
you're you're going to have consumer behavior in there. You're going to have the four P's, uh, product place. Uh, oh my, am I going to remember it? Product place, price, and promotion. Uh, and perhaps you're going to have a section on um, competition as well. Okay, so you've got three major topics. Turn uh, uh, those topics into some essay style questions. So, for example, what are each of the four P's? What is product? What is price? Uh, what is consumer behavior? What impacts consumer behavior? What do I need to know about my competition? Uh, you can even go deeper into your textbook or into your notes and turn headings or key points into questions. You might be able to go back and look at uh, past tests or quizzes for question ideas. Uh, you can even take some multiple choice uh, questions and turn those questions into essay style questions and just ignore the choices. When you have a number of questions ready, then you can go into your textbook, into your notebooks, uh, uh, into other materials that you might have and study until you find the answer to one of your questions. OK, when you find that answer, uh, take some notes about that question. Rather than trying to do all of the material at once, focus just on one question at a time, finding the answer to that. OK, once you have that answer, then uh, do take some notes. I want you to stop studying for a moment and I want you to recite out loud or Write out, uh, write either uh, on a computer or by hand uh, and explain what you have found out, uh, what the answer to that question would be. You could even go so far as to pretend you're explaining this to someone else. All right. Now, this is an important step. Uh, when you create your questions, you're focusing your mind on solving a puzzle. And when you're reading until you find that answer, this is a way of chunking your material into smaller pieces. When you stop and take some notes, you're using a different part of your brain to interact with the material. That helps move that from long-term to short-term memory. At this stage, when we're reciting, when we're saying it out loud, writing it down again, explaining it to a friend, or in the case of my slide, telling our favorite fur baby all about what we've just learned, uh, this helps you retrieve that information from your long-term memory. And when you do something with it, like write an answer or say it out loud, it is again, encoding that information as important and helping you solidify that information in your long-term memory. We need to practice retrieving the information because that's the kind of thing that we do during an exam. In the review step, um, is I think is important to go back over the questions that you used last time and uh, review again, can you still answer those questions? So ask yourself the question, mentally review the material and then go back into the answer that you wrote or go back into your notes and check how accurate you are. Those quick reviews, again, help uh, intensify the information in your long-term memory. Okay, I have some tips for you as well about staying on track with your study. Uh, it can be overwhelming, I think, to take a look at a, a, a study schedule where you're spending a number of hours in a row or over a number of days studying. Um, and so, I know that it can be hard to stay motivated. Uh, I want to suggest to you that you work on sticking to the schedule that you have created. You may need to set alarms or reminders for both the beginning and also do that for the end of your study session. And you really do need to treat your study periods as non-negotiable appointments. All right. Um, don't let someone pull you away into something else. Prioritize the time that you have available to you and study. 
We also encourage you to use the Pomodoro technique, and that is a technique about setting breaks. Now, the uh, the official Pomodoro study technique is for longer periods of time. So the suggestion is to study for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break and repeat this four times. That would be a two hour study session and then take a longer 15 to 20 minute break. That's probably a little bit longer than you have available to you. I had suggested one two and three hour breaks. So my suggestion to you is that you study for 25 minutes, take a five minute break and you do that twice. Okay, and then take a longer 15 to 20 minute break and then come back and do another 25 minute study session. That is what you can accomplish in a two hour period of time. So three study sessions, one five to 10 minute break, one 15 to 20 minute break. That's going to help you keep motivated and keep you mentally fresh. I encourage you also to track your your progress, review what you have accomplished. Uh, that can be very heartening to see that you're making progress. And uh, if you need to adjust your schedule, you may need to add uh, additional time for a particular subject that you're finding more difficult to study for than you had anticipated. It is important to build in some flexibility because emergencies are going to happen, uh, unexpected interruptions, or like I said, you may find one topic that's a little more difficult than you had anticipated, and you're going to need some more time for that. Um, but don't panic, just reschedule and move forward. You can reward yourself after you've completed some of your study sessions, maybe watch a short video or grab a snack and do remind yourself as you're studying at the end about the good things that you are doing for your academic studies. As you're studying and preparing for these exams, uh, you're solidifying that knowledge. You're going to do better on those exams than, than if you had not studied. We also encourage you to limit distractions when you're studying. So try to find a quiet place where you can work and not be interrupted. I encourage you to study both at home and here at the college. There's some advantages to spending some of your exam study time here at the college. If you get stuck, there's professors, there's the library, there's tutors, there's fellow classmates around who might be able to give you information, okay? Uh, if you're looking for good places to study, I encourage you to check out the library. You can book study space there uh, in advance and have a quiet room to yourself. Uh, you, there's also space available available in uh, a number of different spots that you might want to take a look at. Uh, if you have the ability to use um, a do not disturb mode on your phone or your computer, turn off notifications that can prevent some of these uh, electronic distractions that happen. I also encourage you to talk to your friends, your family members, people that you might live with or are in your space, wherever you are tutor or wherever you are studying, to just let them know that this is your study time and that this is really important. Uh, let them know that you're going to study for one hour or two hours and be happy to talk to them or be happy to take care of an errand, for example, once your study time is over. I also encourage you uh, to whatever space that you are studying in to declutter that a little bit if you can so there's not a lot of other things around. Um, and that can really help your uh, distractions as well. I'd like to move on now and talk about how to handle some internal uh, distractions. There are times when things that are going on in our own heads and our own emo emotions is what's distracting us from our studying and making our study time more difficult. Uh, uh, and those sometimes can be harder to manage than say a roommate uh, who keeps interrupting. So let's talk about that for a moment. When you're studying, if you find that you are having a lot of different thoughts and ideas unrelated, like I need to buy groceries or, um, oh, I forgot to email prof my professor or, uh, 
I don't know what I'm going to eat tomorrow, or, you know, I don't know if I have my laundry done, whatever that might be. When those unrelated thoughts pop into your head, have a notebook or a piece of paper, or a sticky note, and just draw it jot yourself, jot it down, write down something like um, check on groceries, email professor, um, uh, set out clothes for uh, tomorrow. Quickly jot it down and recognize that thought that you've had. Uh, park it. That's the idea, having a parking lot notebook. Park it and then come back to your study. And I reassure yourself that you're going to think about and deal with all of those things that came into your head while you're studying after the studying is over. OK, sometimes acknowledging these thoughts can help us to stop continuing to send us ourselves these messages um, about things that we might be concerned about or worry about or pop into our head while we're studying. And then certainly do take a look at those parking lot issues after your studying is over. Sometimes you just need to do a quick mental reset. If you're finding yourself losing focus where you've read something and, you know, you're looking at it and you don't even remember having read that when you have to go back and start over, when you start feeling those things, sometimes what you need to do is just a quick mental reset. Doing something like stretching, taking a few deep breaths, uh, drinking water can be enough to kind of clear your mind and prepare you to come back and begin studying again. I do think it is helpful to practice mindfulness uh, two, three minutes before you're studying. Uh, focus on your breath. Take a few deep breaths. Let go of any distractions or worries or things that you've been thinking about. Again, if your mind water, wanders, bring yourself back uh, to what you're doing. Make a note if it's uh, something distracting. Uh, these kind of um, practices bef even before you begin studying can be really helpful. Oftentimes we're rushing around, we finally get down uh, to be able to study and we're already scattered. So taking a few moments, taking a few deep breaths uh, can help you to be in a better mental state to begin your studying. I think it's really important that you take care of yourself during the study period. It can be pretty stressful. Uh, and as we've already seen, you may have projects and presentations you have to do. You're trying to find extra time to study. You're trying to manage the rest of your life. Uh, we really encourage you to, in, in, in addition to taking breaks, practicing mindfulness, some of the other suggestions, uh, uh, that we have already given you to think about these ideas. Sticking to a routine as much as possible can be very comforting. Keep regular sleep and meal times. Don't forget to eat. Don't forget to sleep during your study periods. Uh, I often ask, have students ask me, Irene, what would be better? Should I study for two more hours or sleep for two more hours the night before exam? I say sleep for two more hours. Okay, make sure that you're well rested going into the exam the next day. Uh, by sticking to your routine, you will find that these familiar routines uh, can provide some stability and can reduce anxiety. Practice positive self-talk. Okay, sometimes we are our worst critics. Replace negative thoughts like I'll never finish this or I'll never understand this with encouraging ones like I've got a plan, I'm making progress. Remind yourself that you're doing your best. And that that's enough. I encourage you to, to also connect with others. If you find you're getting stressed out, if you find you're getting very anxious, by all means, talk with somebody you trust. That might be a family member or a friend. You're certainly welcome to uh, come and see us in student services and talk to one of our academic counselors or one of our mental health counselors. Get the support that you need uh, so that you are not overstressed during exam season. Uh, certainly, 
studying with a group of friends, with a, a group of uh, fellow students can be really helpful. Uh, taking, Making up some questions and testing each other can be a great way to retrieve information and to get involved with that information more deeply than just reading over your notes. So think about uh, uh, starting a study group for some or all of your classes. Again, take care of your physical health as well. Make sure that you get enough sleep. Keep hydrated. Dehydrated can make it difficult to concentrate and it can also increase your fatigue. Eat some brain boosting foods. Do some healthy snacks, nuts, fruit, yogurt, whole grains. Those are all good things for your brain. And don't forget to incorporate a little bit of physical activity. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go to the gym every single day unless that's part of your regular routine. Then by all means do so. Uh, but even even a 10 minute walk, a little bit of stretching, some exercise uh, in between your study sessions and your classes can improve your blood flow, can reduce your stress. So we encourage you to do that. I can see here in the chat room um, that we have some agreement with the idea of using sticky notes when we're distracted mentally, uh, the Pomodoro technique. I think it's really valuable uh, to Break up your study sessions into smaller sections and take you know, a break in between. If we think about what's happening during those period of times, especially if you're uh, reading your notes, you're taking a lot of information in, taking a break every 25 minutes gives your brain an opportunity to process that information. And that's really powerful. OK, and it gets you set up and ready, especially if you're switching topics uh, to move on to the next topic. That is the bulk of what I had prepared to talk to you about today. In the meantime, let me once again thank the SRC and Mr. Marco for being with me here today through this presentation. I hope that you find it useful.